Welcome, everybody, to the Pitch Drive Chronicles podcast. I am Chats. I am here with Donald and Rob. And we are seeing some business being conducted in baseball, not with the players because they're not allowed to even, you know, go out in public because of the CBA and the shutdown. But the owners are still doing managerial hires. And, you know, um, bench coaches, you know, all, all types of uh, business, just not with the players. And I think that's kind of unfair because if they're the ones that voted to shut down the negotiations, then they should not be allowed to conduct their other business. You, know, you put yourself in a situation, you got to suffer with the rest of us and figure it out when, when we get back into it. So... Do you think that that's the, that's a fair way to, to to go, or do you think that being that they're not part of the players' association, they they really do have the the right to have business as usual? You just said it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I mean, it's all about the CBA anyway, so uh, I don't really have a problem with it, bro. No, I mean you could definitely see both sides. You know, it's if the players aren't allowed to sign anywhere, then why are the uh, managers allowed to sign different with different teams? But, you know, it's two completely different sides. That's why they have the whole CBA. So uh, it's annoying, you know, because you're like, oh, this guy might be hired by this team, but it's like, but th that team can't sign him players or something like that. So really all the news we have are just manager rumors. And it's, uh, it's annoying. You can definitely see the argument why they shouldn't be allowed to, but again, it, they're separate from the players association. So they have a players association for a reason and the owners have their own thing. It, it's, I don't like it, but I get it. Yeah. Well, so, just because we don't like it doesn't mean that they can't do it. You know, right. That, that, that's the problem, you know, and that goes to any, anywhere in life, you know, you, you could disagree with something, but still allow it to happen, you know, to, you know, obviously you know, as long as it's, you know, everybody's safe and nobody's harming somebody but you know we are at least getting headlines and stuff to discuss you know that you know and you know especially more locally with the Mets interviewing for their manager and Buck Showalter has been the the highlight of those interviews and I didn't think there was any way that Buck was going to go back into managing I thought he really enjoyed his role working with the Yes Network is in the post-game analysis. And he was so good at it. it. Look, it was a natural job for him. So I was really surprised that he even entertained an interview. So with, with Buck going on to a new manager position, even if it's, you know, going to the Mets, do you think that it increases the team's probabilities of making the postseason? Yeah. I think it's a really good move from that. Um, <clears throat> as he baseball fan I think it's great because um, I've uh, been very concerned that a lot of baseball lifers are being pushed out of the game uh, he is one of the baseball lifers um, and uh, knows the game inside out very good manager um, <clears throat> I disagree that um, older managers have let the game pass them by I don't agree with that um, I, and I think the the analytics and quote unquote the nerds have sort of taken over and it's been to the detriment of the game. So if we can get some great old school managers back, more of them in the game, we already have one with the Braves and they and they won a championship. So I'm not saying the Mets are going to win a championship, but I think they'll be relevant again. Um, I mean, the signings will certainly help, but having a uh, an excellent baseball mind running the show that can handle egos and can manage the game well. Um, he's also not adverse to analytics. You know, if you listen to Buck Showalter and the Yes Network, he's a very smart guy. He he's he collates all information. So he's not going to be a type where he's going to be like, ah, nah, nah, I'm going to do it my own way. He's going to take, he'll going to take the right approach where he'll be like, okay, so the analytics tell me this. And then he uses his own, you know, thinking and then kind of merge the two. I think that's the way it should be. And, and all managerial aspects. Um, so, listen, if uh, as a baseball fan, I think Buck Walter will definitely, if he gets the job, I'm not saying he's got the job, he's definitely not got the job yet, but he's the favorite yeah. at the moment. If he gets well, the, the job. He's the favorite right now. Yeah, he's, he's a presumptive favorite. Uh, and if he gets the job, I think it would be a very good hire for the Mets, and I think it'll be a, 
um, it'll certainly push them towards relevancy. Um, I don't think they'll be the butt of jokes anymore. Um, and um, as a Yankee fan, I'm disappointed because uh, <laughs> I wish he was the Yankee manager or I wish he was involved in the Yankee organization. Well, they I, picked I Boone over him, so. Exactly. Um, so that's my thoughts on the matter. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, the, the Mets didn't really have a ton of options. I mean, if it was really – once Melvin went to San Diego, they really had to interview a bunch of guys who haven't managed in a little while or maybe they went with uh, Mike Schilt, who I think is still available, if I'm not mistaken, which I think is crazy. But, crazy. Um, I mean, it makes sense for them, I, I guess. Uh, I don't necessarily see the uh, the huge appeal with Showalter. I think he's a good manager. I just don't think he's like the cream of the crop or, or savior by any means. If you look at his managerial history, he's got a lot of wins. He's had some winning seasons, but, you know, he left Arizona – they won a championship the year after he left us. We won a championship the year after um, he had like eight years with Baltimore and only a few of them were winning seasons. So it's not like he was just, you know, this guy that's been sitting on the open market for years. It's like, how has he not been hired yet? He's a good manager. I don't think he's an amazing manager. I think he'll be fine for the Mets. They've given him a solid roster already. If they hire him, um, when you have those two guys at the top of your rotation, it's hard to fail but they do have some holes they have to, you know, fix on that team. And look, the roster is there. The foundation is there. If they put the rest of that team together, any manager should succeed under those circumstances. Maybe not Rojas, but um, we'll see what happens. If they hire him, good for them, good for Buck. Uh, I think he was great with the Yes Network. Um, had In terms of the Yankees, I don't think it would have made a drastic difference if we hired him over Boom. I just I don't see it. Because it's clear Cashman wants his guy. This was Cashman's yeah. recommendation to take Boone over Showalter. So, and we know Cashman runs the show. And now it's clear as day that Hal said, I kind of want Buck Showalter. But Cashman said, no, 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 Boone. And Hal said, okay, so who, who's running the thing? Is, is that what we've heard, though? I'm not sure about that. I mean, that's what, that's what the reports that, were saying. That is that Hal, what we've heard? Yeah, I've that Hal. The, I've, I've got the thing here. Um, Bob Clappish. Um, Said, catch you up. Bush Buck Schwarter had his Zoom interview with him yesterday. Everything I hear says he's the favorite to get the job. I wonder how close Buck came to replacing Boone last August. I'm told the internal debate was quite fierce before Hal decided to stay the course. So, well, that, I think it was Heyman. What do you that think? Said, I think it was Heyman that said that um, Cashman's recommendation of keeping Boone. So, I mean, I don't think oh, Heyman. Really? Was- yeah, I don't think Heyman's going to put out as dumb as he can be at times. He's not going to put out some false information out there just for the hell of it. You know, he's got to have some solid sources. He's usually right when it comes to his Yankee stuff. He's very involved in, is, when yeah. it comes to Yankee terms. So I will give him that. I'm pretty sure it was Heyman that said that. I'll have to go back and look, though. So working on that premise, what sense does it make, then, if there was internal discussions about Aaron Boone – job suitability in August when we were capsizing as an organization and we didn't recover after August. We, we stuttered our way through yeah. to the wild card, um, finished third uh, in the division and then uh, got embarrassed in the wild card. So <laughs> things didn't exactly improve after August. So you work on that premise that um, there was issues with Aaron Boone's management in August why did he get a four-year contract then? What kind of sense does that make? Because he does whatever Cashman wants. That, and that does, you know, Cashman doesn't want anybody that's going to battle him. Unbelievable. And, and I got this tweet here from Heyman. It was from a okay. few days ago. He talks about Showalter and all that. The belief is he, he wants the job. He's a finalist. He was a finalist for the Phillies and Angels the last couple of years. This last part says his name came up am- among Yankees before Hal decided to take Cashman's recommendation to bring back Boom. So <laughs> I replied with to that, that that last part is going to set Yankees fans into a frenzy. And it kind of did to a point. I mean, I don't know, not that many people saw it, but look, Heyman, you could say what you want about him. I don't think he's the greatest reporter out there, but again, when it, comes, 
Yeah. yeah, when it comes to his Yankee stuff, he seems to be on most yeah, of the he's, time. He's an insider. Would, so he's, right. So he's got to have I, some information. There. No, with the, with the two local teams, he's usually pretty good. It's outside the New York market, I think, is where he, he doesn't – he's not at his best. So there's obviously you no know, a united front within the Yankee organization. No. There were people that were very much happy for Aaron Boone to leave. But Brian Cashman runs the whole thing and he gave him an unprecedented three-year plus an option contract. What I'm saying is it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If there's real heated discussions about Aaron Boone's suitability in August, and then from judging by John Heyman's tweet that it was also in the offseason that there was heated discussions about Aaron Boone's job security. Why are they giving them such a massive contract? If I mean, if Brian Cashman was like, all right, well, I want to keep him, but I'll listen to you guys to an extent where I'll say, you know, he has to prove it. I'll give him a one-year plus an option, prove it deal. You know, that would make more sense than just basically giving him the entire bag. That doesn't make any sense. It just kind of shows that the whole Yankee organization is completely lost, and the person that runs the show is Brian Cashman and Hal Steinbrenner. But Hal Steinbrenner does run the show. He just defers to Brian Cashman. So it's actually Brian Cashman who's really the owner of the Yankees. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, yeah that's what it is. It's Brian Cashman's running the roost. That's it. There's no other way. This is almost almost proves it. You know, it's it's not you know set in stone. But when you want, when you look at all the actions and decisions that are being made, it all comes back to well, this is what Cashman wanted. Yeah. Not what the owner wanted. You know, and that's the problem with with the way that the Yankees are being constructed right now, the way they're being run. They're being you know. You have to. We all know that Hal Steinbrenner really doesn't have any interest in baseball itself. He just owns the team for a cash machine. You know, it's his ATM machine. Yeah. You know, and, you know, so do we really want him that involved as opposed to Cashman, who's been, you know, let's be honest, he's the one that's been in the trenches for 20 plus years, you know, where he has a, a better idea of how teams are run, how players, you know, player relations, managerial relations, where Hal has no clue what's going on. So do we really want him that involved? And so it, it's that double-edged sword where you got to look at both sides of the coin to see its full value. So that's 100% case, double-edged sword. I think that's the best way of describing it. Um, remember when uh, Hal Steinbrenner came out uh, in the GM meetings and he's like, oh, I want to go, Gal, and you can ask Cash this, but I told him, I mean, how weird is that for the owner of the of the organization to, to say, oh, ask our general manager uh, in, in case you guys don't like listen to the word of the owner of the New York Yankees? You're the owner, bro. You, yeah. Why are you asking somebody else to, to, to answer the question that you've stated? I mean, Unless yeah. you're actually lying, which is probably the case, right? Just, Could you imagine if George had to go to, to to Gene Michael and be like, is, you know, is it okay if, you know, can you talk to this plot? No, George made the decision. I want him. I don't want him. Make it happen. I know. You know <coughs> it wasn't George would never around. say that. Exactly. When George Steinbrenner basically pushed the Gary Sheffield deal, you wouldn't have gone, oh, ask Brian Cashman that I really want to <laughs> Gary Sheffield, do you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's weird. It just shows that Hal Steinbrenner is not really involved. And he and he knows that. He's not a baseball guy. And he asks Brian Cashman to run the whole thing. And he's quite happy for him to do it. He's given him the whole kings, the keys to the kingdom, man. The yeah. whole keys. You know, and we've been saying this forever. You know, we've been saying it forever, how this is Cashman's team. Look at back to the beginning of the offseason, right? Hal said or he was going to go over the luxury tax or the trade deadline. I'd be willing to go over, but we traded away more prospects to get other teams to pay the salaries for that year. We didn't pay a single dime for Rugnet Odor. You know, like the writing was on the wall. Like even though we would have gone over if we had to, but then Cashman says mission accomplished. You know, like th there's <laughs> too much. Wh which one is it? House, uh, right. And it's bad. And this is why I was saying for a while, I want Cashman gone. 
You know, it's not that I don't like the guy, but I don't want this in the organization because it's clear as day that maybe Hal does want to do things a little bit differently. Maybe. I don't know what's going on in his head. You know, it could be that toy that just bangs the two drums together for all I know. But yeah. it, it could be that maybe Hal wants to conduct business a little bit differently. Maybe he is sick of all the losing and the complaining from the fan base. It's like, I'm going to lose money. He's going to make a ton still, but he's going to still lose some if yeah. people don't show up. Maybe he is mad about that. But then Cashman's like, no, 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 I'm going to do things my way. And if, if this is true, if Hal said – Maybe we should change the manager. And Cashman said, I think we should keep Boone. And eventually he agreed with Cashman. Then it's just, I was like, ah, you know what? I got my money. You run the show. You do your thing. It's clear. This is Cashman's team. It has been for a long time. This is even during when, when George was still alive. Remember, even in 09, George was still alive, but he wasn't running the show. You know, it, it, Hal was running the show and Hal and Hank at least. And now that, Hank is gone as well. We lost Hank. We lost Hank Steinbrenner as well. Hal is just like I can do whatever I want at this point, and let Cashman run the show. Cashman, it's Cashman's team. That's why I wanted him gone, and he's got one year left. But now that Boone's here for another four, we're going to have Cashman back as well. So it's going to yeah. be the never-ending cycle. Yeah. But remember when uh, Hal Steinbrenner blamed it all on the players in August, and uh, it was all the players. Nothing to do with the management. We've got a great manager in there and Boone, bloody, bloody, blah, blah, blah. That makes me think that that if if there is internal discussions going on about Aaron Boone's job status, I have a feeling it was between Brian Cashman and the other baseball uh, people in the front office, possibly the analytics staff as well, because we heard that uh, there was that rumor that the uh, analytics staff weren't very happy with Brian, uh, with Aaron Boone's management during the year of or his use of analytics. Do you remember that when that was leaked? Um, I have a feeling that was the case, that it was an internal discussion between the Yankees front office. And then when it was had, handed over to Hal Steinbrenner, Hal Steinbrenner would have just like, deferred to uh, Brian Cashman because he doesn't really want the responsibility. That's what my personal belief is. But, you know, we're, none of us are privy to negotiations. Uh, it's just, it's just interesting. It's just fascinating, really. Um, and uh, it speaks to the the Yankees are not united, man. They're dis, there's a discord there. There's a disconnect. There's a disconnect between the front office and the fan base. That's a big disconnect. Yeah. You can already see it. You know, there's a disconnect between the fan base expectations of where we need to be in free agency and the Yankees, where the Yankees basically sat and they're just going to wait until after the CBA to decide how much they've got in their budget as if budget is their primary concern. Um, there's a disconnect there, and there's clearly a disconnect between, in the front office between who should be managing this club. But Brian Cashman wants his puppet. He was always going to go with his guy. That was never going to change. He even said it during the year where he said, uh, I've made my bed with Aaron Boone. I'm just going to have to live with it. <laughs> that was a terrible thing to say, but it just shows that he, he's, he's just basically admitted, you know, He's my guy, and I'm just going to ride with it you know, for another four years. Well, the other problem, and worst-case scenario, because I, I don't think it's as permanent as, you know, some fans may think, is players that are, you know, the free agents that are looking for a team to go to, if they see that there's all this, you know, all, all these backstories, you know, and, you know, behind the scenes issues and squabbles or whatever you want to call it, they're not going to sign with that team. They're going to, they're going to want to go somewhere that's a little more structured where, you know, or the manager is going to want to work for a team that's going to not breathe, be breathing down their neck. And once, once they're at the ballpark, it's the manager's game. You know, it's, it's his team. And, you know, when, when the games aren't being played, that's when the manager works with the GM and during the game, the manager works with the players and his coaching staff. It shouldn't be the GM working with the players and the GM working with, you know, that's what the manager's for. And to bring it back to, to the initial topic, we also saw statements from Scherzer that he's, you know, he wants Buck to be the, the manager. Um, he, he's vouching for him publicly. 
do you think the players should be should, should have that kind of say or or try to influence a hire? Sure. I mean, if he's got a bunch of players on the team, you know, with the same uh, thought process as him, you know, if it's just his opinion, you know, then it's just one person out of a 26 man roster. But if, if there's more people like if him and DeGrom both came out and said, I think the Mets make the hire today, you know, like <laughs> those are the two most important guys on that team at this point. But, yeah, I don't see why players can't have a say in who the manager is. Why not? And I think there is, you know, if you take it back to the Yankees real quick, a lot of players like Darren Boone. You yeah. know, a lot of players spoke highly of me. Even everyone's favorite player right now, Clint Frazier, spoke highly of him in one of his press conferences. So, I mean, it's not like the players were against Boone. Um, but yeah, I think players should have a say in who the manager is. Like, if you want this guy, I would like to, you know, I'd like to be managed by this guy. He's a good baseball mind, so why not? Buck Walter is a great baseball mind. So, yeah. you know, him managing a guy like Scherzer would be a, a pretty good matchup right there. I just, you know, I, that's, I think you know, that's a good point, man. That is a good point. See, what you're saying that um, uh, the players like Darren Boone. Aaron Judge probably had a lot to do with his, his rehiring. Remember, he was, he was quite uh, open about it. He's like, I want him back. Uh, I think he did a great job. That kind of a thing. I, you know, I, I think that did have an influence. Man. I, think you're, I think you're right about that, to be fair. In fairness. Yeah, you could almost hear the discussion between, or you know, between um, Holland and Cashman. You know, they're going back and forth. I want somebody new. I want book. And then you know, Cashman just kind of drops the mic. Goes, well, you know, uh, <laughs> Judge really likes Boom. Oh, okay, then bring him back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That that's what. That's the only reason Boone is still here because of Judge. <laughs> but you see, with experienced managers that have got cachet and people respect, yeah. there'll be one of there'll be players that want to play for them. No, I that doesn't so... really exist. That doesn't really exist with middle managers. No yeah. free agent, unless they're tied to Aaron Boone in some way, is going. Oh, I really want to play for an Aaron Boone managed team. That doesn't happen. But if you've got a big name like a Buck Walter or something like that um, in the running, then certain players will be like, "I want to play for this guy." That. That happens, but it's it's an outlier in baseball, man. Because I don't think it's a I don't think it's a thought really for most free agents, um, because there's so few big name managers now. There's so few of them um, out there that it's really just an organizational thing. It's about the money first, second an organization, and I think management is is kind of lower in the list. I think they'll look at the the general manager first, who's running the show first before before who they're worried about who's going to be managing the team because everyone knows these days managers are just middle managers anyway the gm is the one that runs the show so if brian cashman uh impresses a free agent then you know there's no question they're not they're not going to ask well who's the manager going to be they're going to be like cool and it's also the print strike so they'll sign and that's for the max well got, that's why i agree with uh hiring doug showalter because they don't have the cashier right now. They've been a struggling franchise since '86. You know, they had one or two good teams since. They had the play. They had the World Series run that was good, and they had the World Series run when, when we beat them in 2001. But apart from that, they've not been very good for a while. Um, they have to build themselves up. Build themselves up with having a an owner that's like, here's the money, take it, and then having a a big time manager, big name manager, people respect all over baseball. Yep. That helps their cachet. That helps them climb back up the ranks. So I think the Mets are doing the right thing. No, I th I think the Mets kind of really did a complete 180 where they're not the punch. They can't be the punchline anymore. You know, it's you know, the only thing the Mets have to do is make sure that they are able to finish the way that they start, because that's their problem. That you know, and it's been that way for a few years. They'll do very well in the in the spring. But as the dog days of summer comes in, they're out of gas already. Mm -hmm. And that's when other teams start to catch up and pass them. So I think if you have somebody like Scherzer behind DeGrom, you know, I think that's really going to help their rotation. Um, if they solidify their bullpen a little bit. And having Buck Showalter as the manager would really help um, 
keep everything in line and everybody focused. He's, even though he's never brought a team to a, cha- a championship. He's built it all. He's, he's, yeah, he's come as close as anybody, you know, that's not one. You know, he's yeah. almost, he almost reminds you of, um, you know, John Madden. You know, he, oh, he, it took him years to be able to get that first, you know, Super Bowl and that first championship. But once he got it, he was like, I, I'm good now. I want to <laughs> see, I want to, I want to see yeah. Joe Walter be able to say I was a World Series manager. That would be, uh, be good for his resume. But Rob, when you're saying you're bringing up his resume there, you're saying that, you know, he, he left each team uh, before they win a championship. I think that would be, it's unfair to characterize him as him being a problem with that regard. I think that he helped develop a lot of the Arizona players that went on to win the World Series, you know, and then he went on and he certainly had a big part in helping develop the, the younger Yankee players who weren't quite ready to win a championship when he left. Um, but, um, and also Baltimore, what have they done since he's left? Right, so he the fact that he got them into the playoffs and got, had uh, had made them a decent team for a couple of years was was pretty impressive in itself. In the Yankees uh, situation, George Steinbrenner actually tried to rehire him after he hired Joe Torre. He he crapped himself when the media was like clueless Joe and all that it was all over the media, and then George Steinbrenner went and tried to cut a deal and bring uh, Buck Showalter back. Oh, really, really sorry. And Buck Showalter was like, no, you just signed a, just signed a new contract. I'm not, I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not going to do that. So, I mean, he never left in disgrace. So, I mean, let's, let's put it that way. He, he's had a big part to play in, in, um, in three organizations, I would say. No, it, it was never because he was incapable. It was just time to, to, it was time to get a new voice in. You know, yeah. And if you take that, those, that team that he had in Baltimore – that was that battled, but you know, if it wasn't for the the Yankees and the Red Sox in that division, I think they actually would have made a, a good run in the postseason. You know, they the AL East at that point was just it, it was a crap that that was a crapshoot. Yeah, so it really wasn't because he didn't have the you know he never had the right roster. He I think when it comes came to his his career in Baltimore, it was just, he was damned to the, to the division. Yeah, I, I definitely, I can see that. But my point is like, you know, we talk about all the time. It's about what you do when it matters most. Like, you know, Aaron Boone, you can have all these wins you want, but you haven't done it. Well, show Walter's got a lot of wins. He's almost gotten there, but he hasn't done it. You know, that that's my point. So I don't want, people getting the wrong idea. Like I hate Buck Showalter. I think he's a very good manager. He's a very good baseball mind. I just don't think he would be the significant upgrade from what we have right now. Not at this point, you know, the game hasn't passed him by, by any means, but I just don't think that if you replace Boone with Showalter, that turns us into a championship team. I, that's, that's my argument. You know, a lot of people are like, he's the, he's the guy. If we had Showalter, we win a championship. No, we wouldn't. Because the team is not ready to win a championship. There's still far too many holes. So that's my that's my argument. It's not like I hate Buck Showalter, but if I look at his career and I say he's he's had chances, he's had good teams, and he, he didn't get there. You know, and that's what Aaron Boone has done in his short time with the Yankees. He's had good teams. Girardi did it as well. He had good teams, didn't get there, except for that one year. So I just I don't think it'd be a lateral move. I just well, kind of. I, I just don't think it makes us significantly better if you replace Boone with Showalter. That's then, my look at, But also, the last two years, though, the, the biggest issue with Aaron Boone is the fact that the team is characterized mostly for the fact that it would just melt down on several occasions during the year. Um, I, surely Buck Showalter, with his, his managerial abilities, would have been able to stem a lot of these meltdowns that were happening. A lot of it was due to effort, and a lack of uh, any coaching and a lack of any discipline uh, on the field in terms of very poor defense and, and people knowing what they were doing, throwing the wrong bag, these kind of things, uh, terrible base stealing attempts and base running errors all over the field. A lot of that has to go down to uh, Aaron Boone and his, manage- and his coaching staff. Surely a Buck Walter guy, who knows baseball inside out would have cut all those IQ errors out, 
you know, whether we win a championship or not, I think we would have gotten a much better product on the field with a Buck Showalter than an Aaron Boone because he knows what he's doing. Yeah, I think it makes the dugout more competent. It doesn't, you know, it's not a guarantee that he's going to, you know, everyone's like, oh, it, with, with Buck as the manager, it's a lock. No, it's not. But when you look at what you have in Boone, you know, in regards with the Yankees, uh, if you if they were able if they made that switch to 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 show Walter the, instead of re, bringing him back, I think that actually, even with the roster the way it is, I already think that they're an improved team because you have somebody competent that's going to be able to balance the analytics and the old school way of playing baseball. You know, the, the, the way you know, the way you, we grew up with it, you know, where it was more fundamentals. He would blend the fundamentals and the analytics perfectly, whether it, and it improves your chances for success. It's not a guarantee. But the thing is with that is would Cashman want that? Everyone, you know, no, that, Cashman, that's, the, no, that's why he's going to the Mets. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You would not be able to work together. So I mean, I it's a hypothetical. It's a great hypothetical, yeah. but you really have to look at that. Cashman would not want that. It's you know, there's no way those two would be able to work together. I'm I'm sorry, I just don't see it happen. Yeah. Boone is perfect for Brian Cashman. As long as Cashman's here, this is what we're gonna have. And like I said, Cashman's got one year left. No, he doesn't. He's gonna be back for the rest of it. He's gonna be here until he decides to call it quits himself. So the the show Walter would be like, look, look at when how long it took them to switch Glaber Torres. I'm sure Show Walter would have been like, we have to do this switch sooner, but Cashman would be like, No, 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 I'm right, you're wrong. Yeah. Then you'd have that internal discussion and show Walter would probably quit. <laughs> I wouldn't blame him. Like, you know what? If you're not gonna do it the way I want to, screw it, I'm out. So I just I think Cashman right here is the biggest problem with everything. Yeah, yeah I agree. You're right. I think that uh, Boshua would have been a massive upgrade. However, Rob, you're right. <laughs> Brian Cash would never accept it in the first place. So it's a moot point because you, you're right. You would never, ever work with somebody who would um, question what Brian Cashman wants. If Brian Cashman wants something to get done, it has to get done, especially if the analytics says so. Uh, you know, it's, there's, you know, there's no guarantee. Yeah, the, a manager, uh, anybody, you could bring in. You know, superstar after superstar. If they don't, if they can't coexist and and play together on the field, it's really off or not. You know, it really you have to make sure that you uh, you blend your personalities right and have the right leader in that dugout to make sure that everybody stays the course. That's what Show Walter does. Show Walter, you know, it keeps everybody keeps the camaraderie. You know. In, in, even with all those personalities in Baltimore, because you know, that's where most of us would remember him as a manager, where we be able to watch it, is he had all those personalities. There was not, you know, and they all played. They all wanted to play with each other. They all wanted to play well and they wanted to succeed. That's you know, and I know what Rob, you know, Rob's point is also just as valid as mine and yours are. You know, he hasn't, you know. If you want to be the best, prove it. Well, here's another chance for him to prove it. Yeah. You know, let us know in the comments what you think about Buck Showalter being a manager. Should the owners be able to conduct business while the players are locked out? Um, we want to hear your thoughts. So just remember, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check out our social media in the description. Wear your pinstripes with pride and play hard.